Players are starting to clog up rosters by not performing. Is it time to capitalize on others' misfortune? We'll talk about that more in today's action-packed episode of Locked On Fantasy Baseball. You are Locked On Fantasy Baseball, your daily fantasy baseball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yeah, buddy. Hello, fantasy baseball fanatics, and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast, brought to you by Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, your number one source for fantasy baseball knowledge, and thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. I'm your host, Matthew Ane. You can find me on X, Twitter, or whatever you want to call it tomorrow at Matthew underscore Ane. Last name is spelled A as an Apple, H as in Harry, N as in Nancy, E as an Echo, for all you that are listening on audio. And... If you're watching on YouTube, please click the bell below to subscribe to the channel and give you a notification every time you drop a new episode. Also, please leave a five-star rating or review on Apple or Spotify. It goes a long way and help out the show. And if you want more than what we offer in this 30-minute podcast, please check out the Diamond Club on Subtext. The link is in the description below. By joining, you get two weeks free. You'll get a hell of a lot more stuff like waiver wave rankings, prospect call-ups, which haven't been hot right now, but it will be soon. And... You know, a whole, a whole lot more, and if you have some questions, you can also ask us on some roster decisions or trades or all that under the sun. So, guys, also, today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit I have a competitive side, and as a big fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on Classic Monopoly. So join our friends and download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store and Google Play Store. Okay, so I love these episodes. Um, you know, who should we trade for? Who should we trade away? How do we capitalize on guys not performing right now? You know, in the previous weeks, I've talked about Julio Rodriguez and Nick Castellanos and other names that, you know, you might want to go ahead and start targeting in trades to see if you can get them on the cheap, go up a tier or two or several at this point, because it's gone into three weeks so far with certain, with certain players. So right now is a perfect time to capitalize. And Right now, I think this is the perfect time to capitalize on Aaron Judge, funny enough. You know, oh, he looks duty, all this, all this, all this hullabaloo, but honestly, he's Aaron Judge. He's been good for so long. Why are we just like just accepting the fact that he's gonna be this bad for this long? Like, yeah, I get it, right? On the season, he has seven runs, three bombs, nine ribs, batting 182, like it's fugly. This last week, he had two runs, a bomb, three ribs, batting 160. Like Aaron Judge, yes, has the potential to when he's when he's healthy, best bat in baseball. The only thing he really doesn't do is steal a lot of you know bases, but other than that, he's gonna you know pretty much wing you the the home runs category in the weeks that he's actually playing well. Like here's the thing, like I just I don't think this is legitimate. Nothing about Aaron Judge's profile, how he's performing right now, without me even going into you know advanced stats like I did on yesterday's show, shows that he's just performing well under. I mean, you look at last year's stats where he only paid, played and had 367 at bats. He already had 37 bombs in that short time and batted 267. So just take it, take take a deep breath if you own him. Obviously, don't trade him if you watch this show, but um, you know. If you have an opportunity to go and try and sneak him into a trade, like, you know, package him with another guy that's not performing and, you know, if you can accept that roster clog for a week or so until he kind of bounces back. I'm doing it like there is guys later in this episode. I might like, you know, see if I can hang like throw out a low hanging fruit and kind of, you know, get these guys to get for Aaron Judge. Now, I don't know who's going to be able to who's going to give up Aaron Judge, but at the same time, they may be frustrated and fatigued though. Now, when is he going to get hurt? When is he going to, you know, kind of fall, uh, fall off the map entirely where he's completely unusable and he's not performing. So maybe I need to get him off his ta- hand. So like the hedging is probably super real right now with a lot of teams. So like I- I'm targeting him everywhere just to try and see if I could scoop him up on the cheap. And when he's healthy, he's going to be great. Just, you know, you got to ride out the short little ways. But a lot of players are doing this. So this is the perfect time for buy low. Um, let's move on. Let's talk about, you know, Luis Castillo, another guy that's really not performing right now. And again, there is nothing on his profile right now. We've talked about him a few weeks ago, and he's still performing on the lower end side. And now he's even cheaper than last time. Let's put it that way. You know, he's had one good start, which is his recent start against the Cubs. He went six deep, and he ended up with nine Ks and a three ERA. Everything else was like seven ERA, six, three, five ERA, seven ERA. 
5K, 7K, 6Ks, a whip of 160, 194, 2, and 117 in his best start so far. Now, somebody's probably thinking, oh, well, you know, he's on the mend. He just had his first real good start. Blah, blah, blah. Well, he's about to go and pitch at Colorado this weekend. So now is the perfect time to keep targeting him. Throw out an offer now, and they may not want to do it because they want to see what he's going to do in Colorado. And if he gets blown up, you're going to get him for cheap because then I think the trend is trend will start in the right direction. He had that first feel of goodness, right? If he walks away with a four or five ERA next on, on um, what's the day again? I believe it's Saturday, if I'm not mistaken, April 20th. So today is the 17th. So yeah, Saturday, you know, he walks away with a four or five ERA. You really want to try and get him. Try, 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 try. Do it, do it, do it. There's guys later in this episode. I'm willing to move. I actually threw an offer out to see if I can get him myself. So Castillo is somebody that you definitely need to target like right now. Um, another guy is Kevin Gaussman. Um, Gaussman is really just not living up to, you know, how that hot start that he was having in, uh, once he returned from the, um, <laughs> from his injury, his shoulder injury. And, you know, I may be crazy, but it may be that his shoulder is affecting him a hell of a lot more than, you know, it's leading on. And maybe he's about to have an IL stint, but I'm just not seeing it. I mean, yes, his last three starts were absolutely horrendous, you know, well, his last two starts were horrendous. His first start was great against Tampa, the two ERA. Then he goes out against the Yankees, laced in an inning, and had a 33.75 ERA. No Ks, a 4-5 whip. Like, that was ugly. Then does it again at home, though, against Colorado. Not at Colorado, at home, to be specific. So the better pitching park. And he had a 14.73 ERA with only four Ks, made it 3.2 innings, and had a 2.73 whip. Also horrendous. So then he goes out against the Yankees again, redeems himself, and was able to go ahead and get get the job done. Didn't give up a run, got five Ks at a one five whip, which is high, but ultimately that's in the right direction. So right now might be the last time you might be able to get it. This will be the time where they think they'll be able to get a little bit of value for him because now he's on the mend, right? So maybe you can go down a tier and you know kind of offer like a Jesus Lazardo or. And Aaron Nola and try and trade up for Gaussman and be like, yo, like, let me, let me get him. I'll give you him. This guy's kind of okay. But like Gaussman just has a long history of being really good. And, you know, a way, in, in my opinion, a, can contribute a hell of a lot more than Nola at this point, because Nola is going on two years where he's being like up and down. Even though Nola, you know, is a, in my opinion, is a great playoff pitcher and, in, in a close game, I'd run him, but for fantasy, it's not anywhere close to what uh, what Gaussman's done over the last couple of years, right? Since joining the Giants, he's had a sub. Uh, he has he's had under a four ERA, which is completely uncharacteristic to how his career was before that. So he's had a three six two ERA in twenty twenty. He's had a two eight one in twenty twenty one, a three thirty five in twenty two, and a three sixteen last year ERA. These are all his ERA with K numbers of. 227, 205, 237, and these are all under 200 innings pitched. So he's well over to the K per nine. The whip is pretty nice in the 2021 season at a 104. Um, 2022 was a little higher at a 123. Um, and then 23 was a nice at a 117. So like Gaussman is just outputted consistent has been consistent for the last couple of years. So I definitely want to go out there and try and see if I can throw my hat in the ring, try and acquire him now right before he blows back up and starts doing what he normally does this may be the last shot that's why i'm throwing it out there now so try you're gonna have to give up more than you would last week after the two back-to-back -back bad starts but i'm willing to do it to go up a tier without a doubt so as long as i have a guy that's like middling and it's kind of like okay even like a max free nah because max freed ain't doing it either he's He's not performing great. He's another one that you'd probably want to go out and get, but hmm, it's tough. I'm, I, I would have to pull up my rankings from the year, from, from the beginning of the year, but ultimately like so, somebody in the lower tier, uh, essentially what I'm getting at. But all right, before I move on, we talk like a Blake Snell and a Nolan Jones. You probably want to go out there and grab, and then we're going to talk, start talking, you know, guys we need to trade away that are performing a little bit over their belt that can possibly get you one of these guys that, you know, are underperforming right now. That is the perfect time to dump off these guys to go out and get a higher tier player. So just stick around. We'll be right back after this. And guys, you ever worry about what will happen to your family? God forbid something were to happen to you. If so, you need to check out Policy Genius. Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. 
It saves you time and money. You can, and it will provide your family with financial safety net starting today. When pol with Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at two hundred ninety-two dollars per year for one million dollar coverages. Some options offer same-day approval, avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their teams. Licensed ex experts is hands-on and helps you talk through it. Talk talk to a team of award-winning agents who will walk you through the process step by step. What, what we may need to consider is your work life insurance your work life insurance policy may not offer enough protection for your family's needs. Even worse, it may it may not come come with you if you leave your job. Policy Genius gives you an unbiased advice from licensed experts support team that they get they have no incentives to recommend one insurer over the other, which is honestly pretty beneficial because there's no special incentives to make you try and take a worse deal, essentially. So you can trust their guidance without a doubt. Check check life insurance off, off your top of your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on or click the link that subscribes you to, to get that in the description for your free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on MLB. And guys, we're also talking Monopoly Go. I've been told I have a competitive side. And I know Dom, if he was here, he would say that's 100% true. All we do is talk smack each other about baseball and even Monopoly growing up. And I even do it with my family. Okay, well, he, um, <laughs> and we all do at the end of the day, right? We all are competitive. And my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, build up amazing cities and bring in your big money. But the best part is messing with your friends, right? Don't you all want to do that, right? I could charge them rent on my iconic properties or class on just like in classic Monopoly. But now I can also rob their, their vaults and their riches for myself. And the leaderboard shows me who is the biggest Monopoly tycoon, tycoon, which is usually me. But it's not just me, my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with your friends and people all over the world and in time for tournaments to earn huge rewards. So go to the game and join your friends now. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play Store. And it's Locked On's NFL Mock Draft live on April 17th at 7 Eastern. Streaming on Locked On Sports Today's 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or free on Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th at 7 Eastern to hear who the local experts on Locked On's are picking every any every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even fantasy football angles. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft at April 17th at 7 Eastern, streaming live on Locked On Sports Today, 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or free on Amazon Fire TV channels. Also, guys, introducing the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast, Diamond Club on Subtext, your ultimate fantasy baseball companion. This season, this season, rely on our dynamic content. Get real-time alerts right to your phones, including waiver wire rankings, instant call-up notifications, injury reactions, and a whole lot more. Stay ahead of that fantasy league by joining the Diamond Club on Subtext. And where your path to victory begins, subscribe now and elevate that fantasy baseball experience to new levels. You have free two weeks, so you know, you're going to be able to decide whether you want to like it or stick around, and I promise you will. And I promise you will have a leg up on your competition. So with that being said, guys, join now. It's in the description. All right, guys, no more self-promoting, uh, for now at least. Uh, we have a little bit more baseball to talk about, and like I promised at the top right before the break, we have Blake Snell. Blake Snell, you probably guys are probably all, all wondering if you own him. You're probably like really upset about what's going on and how he's performing. You know, over his last two outings against Tampa Bay at Tampa Bay, he had a 15.75 ERA with a two whip. And then the previous start, his first start against Washington, he had a nine ERA and a one six seven whip. You know, the, and he only had four Ks in that, which is a caper caper inning. And then through three in Washington, he had five Ks, which is pretty nice. Like he, at least he's doing that, right? Um, you know. Blake Snell, honestly, like I, I have every confidence in the world. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where he's still ramping up and we all need to remember that. But if you're an owner right right now and um, you're like, oh, my God, well, I drafted him. I had to play, pay somewhat of a price and, 
you know, I just figured, okay, he probably would have had better starts than this, or at least one by now, right? But it's just one of those things where he just hasn't had the success yet. But that's to come, right? Like I, I'm looking at it like this. He his his velocity's all there, except for like, I mean, just period. Like there isn't something that's out of normal. It's screaming, hey Matt, like things aren't working for him at all. Like everything's actually pretty nice for Blake Snell. And you know, there's other than him just needing to be a little bit more stretched out. He also did not have a month of baseball to work out. So this is his first time he's really going at it against real major league hitting. You know, minors don't count. And you know, it may take him a couple weeks before he gets right. So right now I'm gonna go and try and grab him, right? You're gonna be able to get him cheaper because one, he didn't cost you like a top 50 pick. He was probably more like a top 75, top 80, maybe even a top 100, depending on the league and and whatnot, because of how late he was he he waited to sign. Stupid Boris. And on top of that, it only took him about what two and a half, two like a week to get in there. So like he's really not stretched out. It's kind of it's kind of just not a great scenario for Blake Snell. So this is what you can put in your 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 trade mates or future trade mates brain. Hey man, you don't know. You, you might you might be an injury risk this year because he didn't really warm up. Uh, I don't know, man. This is like a year of PJ. Like you know, you you need to really be be on it. Uh, you know, and he's done. He's washed. New year, new team. You know, these all these arguments you can just throw in their ear. Like yo, like let me get him. Just I'll, I'll give you I'll give you something here. Give him a little, you know, you know, like. A little like I'm doing you a favor type deal. Give him somebody that's performing really well right now that, you know, you don't really think it's going to continue, like guys that are coming up. And be like, yo, let me get Blake Snell. And then they might because the hedging is real. Like, honestly, just like look at the comments on everybody that's hedging on certain players that are just like, oh, my God, like these guys suck. Like, no, we're in two, three weeks of baseball right now. And this is what happens. Guys have slow starts. They do return to norm. Usually doesn't last this long. Usually get a little bit of brilliance, like Nick Castellanos not having a multi base, you know, hit like that's ugly. But you know, and Julio just performing as bad as he is. But like Blake Snell will figure it out. If anything, he's just really behind the eight ball. So like right now, I'm mean, I'm trying to go and I'm going to try and acquire him because I know what he's going to do once he gets right. It just may take a month or a month and a half before that happens. So right now is perfect time. Get him cheap. You hang on him. You start him against good matchups until he can, you know, string a couple good ones or at least have a very good um, outing against a really good team. Like, I don't know, the Dodgers or Yankees or, you know, even the Astros or, or somebody that's pretty good. And honestly, too, I'm also not afraid to roll them out at home because that park is great. So it's a great pitching park. So Blake Snell will be successful there as well. I mean, you know, when Rodone went over there, he was instantly successful and had the protection of that that home field advantage. So go out, acquire Blake Snell, and don't think about it twice. All right. Next, we're talking Nolan Jones. Nolan Jones has performed really bad. Okay. He was being drafted pretty high. You know, in a lot of leagues, people starting outfielder or first baseman, and you're just not really happy with the production, right? He has 70 at bats. He has nine runs, four doubles, three uh, a triple, one home run, six ribs, a stolen base. He's struck out 30 times. He's batting 177 and has only walked eight. Like, that is not good at all in terms of total numbers. Now, I'm trying to pull up what his last two weeks was like. And even last week was ugly, right? He had only two runs. He had a bomb, two ribs, and was batting 167. It's not like he's made any changes or anything of the sort. But then you're probably like, then why are you telling me to go out and get him? Well, because he was a really high draft pick. And that's why I kind of didn't draft him where he was, because I just felt like I really wanted him on all my teams. But I didn't want to go and pay the draft price and get a little somebody a little bit more it was consistent. I'm a little bit more conservative with certain in certain circumstances. I didn't feel his upside was as high as like an LED Cruz. I was willing to take that shot on, but now Nolan Jones is not performing and you can get him for cheap. Like I, I wouldn't be surprised if this goes on for the rest of this week, you might see him on your waiver wire. So you might be able to throw a really cheap bid out there for Nolan Jones and you might be able to walk away with him on the cheap. So right now, like I'm doing it. And here's the thing, Nolan Jones last year, you know, what he did last year is the reason why I'm saying doing it, to do it, right? It, it wasn't a fluke. Let's put it this way. He had 367 at-bats. He had 60 runs, 22 doubles, four triples, 20 bombs, 62 ribs, 20 stolen bases. He walked 53 times to 126 strikeouts. He had a batting average of 297, he had an OBP of 389, a slug of 542, and an OPS of 931. Okay, those are great numbers. And he did that in 367 at-bats. 
He's batting half his games. He's going to be hitting at home. You know, that course field bonus, it's better than Great American Hitter Park. You need to go out and acquire him now because when the, when it does click, when it does hit, Nolan Jones could flip a switch and he could be incredible. So go out and target Nolan Jones right now. I promise you it will pan out. But before we move on and I start talking guys that we need to sell high on or just trade away to go up a tier, like Lourdes, Lourdes Guriel, Spencer Steer, Jose Berrios, etc. I got a break for you. Our last break, I promise. Guys, we're talking prize picks. Prize picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks. You pick more or less than two to six player stats projections and watch the winnings, winnings roll in. Exploring my skills on prize picks this season adds an extra layer of excitement to daily fantasy sports. With just a few taps, you can transform $10 into $1,000 easily. Prize picks is incredibly user friendly. You can tr- uh, make your selections and submit your entries in less than 60 seconds. And as the host of Locked On Fantasy Baseball, I actually have some good picks for you. I'll offer Jesus Lazardo to have higher than 1.5 walks in his next start. I'll offer Zach Geloff to have higher than 0.5 ribs in his next outing. I'll offer Julio Rodriguez to have higher than 0.5 runs in his next game, which I know it seems a little, little rough, but ultimately I'm taking that bet because on that bounce back, it may hit. Download the app today and use the code Locked On MLB for first deposit match up to hundred dollars. Again, download the app today and use the code Locked On MLB for first deposit match up to hundred dollars. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with Price Picks. Mm. All right. So last last end of the show, and I'm going to try and fit every single name in today. It's a lightning round, okay? Lourdes Gurriel is playing well above board. Let's just put it this way. Um, you know, Lourdes hasn't been a really good player in a really long time. And last year, you know, he did have a good year. Do not get me wrong, but it's not like a blow me away year. He had 551 at bats. He had 65 runs, 35 doubles, two triples, 24 bombs, 82 ribs, five stolen bases, and he batted 261. He struck out a lot and only walked 33 times to 103 strikeouts in an OPS of 772, an OBP of 309. So, like, you know, I'm not, like, really, like, ex- I wasn't really excited to have him. He was good down the stretch in certain aspects, but he wasn't, like, a full everyday contributor. He did cool off. So, right now, he's going through one of those hot streaks, and I'm riding the wave with him. But the, also, the, what comes to riding the wave is also trying to capitalize on what he's doing now, especially with a lot of players not performing. Loris Gurriel is somebody that you instantly want to float out there for a trade to, you know, help get those teams that are struggling early in the season and try and get those high name guys off the off their team like a Nolan Jones. Because, yeah, you're probably starting Loris Gurriel, but you probably have other guys that you want to you can start over him and wait for a guy like Nolan Jones to bounce back or, you know. Or even an Aaron judgment, I mean, you would probably give up Loris Gurriel and a higher tier guy that's probably that's probably middling. That you know you, you're okay with moving in order to upgrade to Aaron Jones at some point, but Oris Gurriel would be the guy who can even seal the deal and be that extra point that's going to help them out instantly, and you know be the instant contributor that they need to not fall too far behind from the league, waiting for him to you know start performing. All right, we're going to talk about Spencer Steer next. Now Spencer Steer, I like Spencer Steer, his upside is great. He had a good season last year, right? Like in that short period of time, you know, he, well, not short period of time. He played a whole season. He had 582 at bats. He had 74 runs, 37, 37 doubles, three triples, 23 bombs, 86 ribs, 15 stolen bases. He walked 68 times to 139 strikeouts. He batted, he batted 271 in OBP of 356 in a slug of 464 and an OPS of 820. Like all great stats. Do not get me wrong, but how much better is he going to get from last year to this year? Is he going to be 25 home runs? Is he going to be 20 stolen bases, which is great. But how high are those, those runs going to be, right? Like, that's the question. How high are those ribbies going to be? That is the question. Now, yes, they have EC, uh, CES. They have, you know, Ellie De La Cruz. You know, that's all fine and dandy. But they need to start, you know, he needs to start benefiting from it. And even though he's having a good season with 60 at-bats, 12 runs, you know, six doubles, three triples, three bombs already, 18 ribs, and three stolen bases, batting 317 on the year, and 10 walks, 11 strikeouts. Like, it's great. But eventually he's going to cool off a little bit and he's not going to be performing at such a high level where you're going to be able to go and get a guy that's that's upside is significantly higher right now. Like Steer is performing to a point where like the only reason he wasn't going higher in drafts is because of the fact that, 
you know, you weren't sure if he was even going to play because of the roster clocks between Marte and um, gosh, I'm having a brain fart here. The other guy that got hurt on that team, you know, it just, you, you didn't know where he was going to go or what was going to happen. So Spencer Steer wasn't going to have a roster spot. And now he does every day. And now we can trade him and upgrade. So I, I 100% I'm trying to throw him out there. I'm not throwing him out there for Nolan Jones. I'm definitely not doing that, but I might try and slip him in and see if they're struggling. And maybe I can try and go out and get like a Kevin Gaussman or a Castillo, a Castillo and, you know, say, Hey, okay, you got, you got some pitching depth. You need a bat here's steer. And let me get that. And it might actually work out. Might have to throw in a little bit, something extra to do it, but I I, ain't going to be too much more. I think you can definitely get steer for one of these guys without a doubt. Uh, My next guy here is Jose Barrios. Uh, Jose Barrios is, Somebody I, I genuinely don't believe to continue what he's doing. You know, Berrios did have a good season last year. Do not get me wrong. He had a 3.65 ERA through 189 innings pitched. He had 184 strikeouts, and he had a WHIP of 1186. My problem is he also had a FIP of 399 field and independent pitching, which is like a real, like a kind of more of a like a, a real way to kind of see what their actual ERA would be if they had an, uh, an average defense behind him. So he's pitching a little bit above board. Uh, not by much, but enough to be like, okay, he's in the four versus the mid threes. And that is a significant difference. And if the pendulum swings in the other direction where he's now more at a four, then he isn't his value. So right now, what I'm willing to do is capitalize, move up, especially since he did not have to cost me that much. Move up and then go out and try and acquire, you know, Blake Snell, Castillo, Gaussman. And then I, you know, include him with somebody else and I'd be able to take advantage and get like, you know, a couple middling players and see what I can do. You could definitely get a deal done with Jose Vargas being there. Like I said, teams are struggling and they don't want to fall too far behind the eight ball. And Barrios is a perfect person to capitalize, especially if you can accept the the roster early, early roster clog over the next couple of weeks. These players bounce back, which they will. So you know, let's move on. You know, it's just one of those things where you just got to mentally prepare for the poor performance that you're trading away at performing now. But season long versus short term is a lot better. Now let's talk about Ronell. Blanco, I believe is how I say his name. Let me just double check that. So, you know, uh, Ronel, Ronel Blanco. And Ronel has been great. Like straight up, I like this kid. Like this one's a little bit more of a tougher pill to swallow for me. But, you know, you look at his his minor league stats and you can see the path for how he could be good. You know, and in 2021 and 2022, he had 340 ERA and a 363 ERA. And in 2023, he had a 360 ERA. And he's definitely over a K per nine, which is nice. Now he does perform. It's just really just a matter of like, okay, like he is doing great, but you know, how long can this, how long could this last for starters? How long can before the league adjusts and can he readjust back? Like there's no real track history of him. So like, you don't know if like this is a short lived thing and he's thrown a no, no already. So like the value in the, in the word on the street for, for Blanco is much higher then it will be in the middle of the season if he starts teetering off. So I, I would personally capitalize now. Uh, I would also understand if you don't. So it's just one of those things where it's just a matter of how, what are you willing to do and what, what situation you're in now with your team that you, whether you do need a contributor, or whether you can accept the roster clock essentially. But I want to get this last guy in because I wasn't able to get my last guy in yesterday. And it's Cutter Crawford. Another guy I feel we do need to move on from um, just because you can get some serious value. It's the same thing as Blanco. I like Cutter. Cutter, just you look at him and he's never really had a track re- record like Blanco. You look at his ERA through, you know, to the minors and stuff, and it's a 547, a 518, you know, a 428. And then, you know, in 2019, he had a 357 and a 326 in 2018. So, like, his, he doesn't have, he's not showing, you know, this. He's pretty much doing an outlier of what he normally did in the minors. Now, it doesn't mean Cutter won't be good and can't stay good. You know, maybe it was just him working on new pitches, and that's why he was getting lit up. And the underlying stats are what really brought him to the forefront of Boston. So Cutter Crawford right now, I think, is somebody you can trade away and try and get something before the val- the value drops right right from under you. So, yeah, my last guy there, you know, as much as I'd love to go a little bit more in depth, I can't because we're running out of time. So, guys, I want to thank you so much. Um, I know I promised uh, waiver wire today, but um, messed up my schedule. We'll be here tomorrow, so please stick around for that. And with that being said, guys, have a great rest of your day. And please like, subscribe, comment, rate, and review, and peace out, guys.